If you are keeping up with agent in Langchain, you know there are many ways to build an agent. But in this video, I bring a new idea to the table. So what I'll be showing you today is how to create a double confirmation agent action with a loop in action and react prompting for a better control system on your chatbot. I've noticed that many tutorials tend to make things more complicated than they need to be. That's why I decided to create a quick and straightforward guide. With my code, you can easily create chatbots for your business or personal use. But here's the kicker. With this method, you can completely tweak and customize your app to fit your needs perfectly. If you want the code, comment code, and I will DM you the link code. Definitely stay tuned throughout the end of this video. If you guys haven't followed me, I highly recommend that you do so, so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. Lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn the notification, bell like this video, and check out previous videos because there is a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. So that thought, let's get right back into the video. Human in the loop refers to a system design where humans and agents work together iteratively to achieve a goal. In LangGraph is a single shared state that makes the process easier to observe, interrupt and modify. This is very important for complex LLM applications, where some amount of human supervision approval editing can be the difference between a toy and a deployment useful in the real world. React prompt short for reasoning plus acting, is a technique used to improve the capabilities of large language models, LLMs, like the ones that power Langchain chatbots. Here's how it works, reasoning and acting together. Unlike traditional prompting methods that just focus on providing instructions, React prompts instruct the LLM to reason verbally, think through the steps required to complete a task or answer a question, similar to how a human would approach a problem. Take actions, simulate actions within a limited environment to gather information or test assumptions. While Langchain's human in the loop allows for real world interaction through humans, React prompts the LLM to act virtually. Let's start coding. Don't worry if you don't feel knowledgeable in any of them. You'll be introduced to each concept and technology along the way. Besides, there's no better way to learn these prerequisites than to implement them yourself in this tutorial. Langchain provides many modules that can be used to build language model applications. These modules can be combined to create more complex applications or be used individually for simple applications. The Langchain core package contains base abstractions that the rest of the Langchain ecosystem uses. The Langchain experimental package holds experimental Langchain code intended for research and experimental uses. The Langchain community package contains third-party integrations. It is automatically installed by Langchain typing. This is a built-in Python library that helps define the data types used in the code. The Langchain OpenAI. This library integrates the OpenAI API into the chat agent. The LangGraph is a module built on top of LangChain to better enable the creation of cyclical graphs. We define a class named AgentState that tracks the conversation's current status. This state includes the latest user message, the entire chat history, what the agent plans to do next, like searching for something, and whether the conversation is ending. It also keeps a log of the agent's actions throughout the conversation to understand its decision process. Then we set up tools. One is Tavily, a search engine where the agent can find information to ensure only the top search result is retrieved from Tavily. Finally, we integrate OpenAI's API. To start communicating with GPT-4, you'll need your API key to use this functionality. We define a function called extract JSON, which takes a single parameter, text. Inside the function, we're going to use a try accept block, a common practice for handling potential errors gracefully. Within the try block, it searches for the index where the JSON part of the text begins by locating the substring AI. If AI is found, the function proceeds to pull the JSON portion of the text, stripping any leading or trailing white space. Following this, it tries to pass the extracted JSON string into a Python object using the json.loads function. We set up a function named Python repl. Imagine you have a tool as a mini computer inside the chatbot. You can give this mini computer Python code and it will run the code for you. 
If the code runs successfully, the tool will generate the output, which is like the answer the mini computer gives. However, if there's an error, the tool will output it failed and why. Defines a chat prompt template called prompt2 with input variables agent, jaw, scratch pad, input, tool names, and tools. It specifies the input types for chat history and agent scratch pad as lists of various message types. AI message, human message, chat message, system message, function message, tool message. The template contains multiple messages. A system message prompt, template, a messages placeholder for chat history, a human message prompt template, and another messages placeholder for agent scratch pad. The system. Message prompt template describes the assistance capabilities as a large language model capable of assisting with various tasks and constantly learning and improving. The human message prompt template includes instructions for the response format, which can be either a JSON code snippet indicating the use of a tool or a final answer in JSON format. The template also includes placeholders for the user's input and the available tools. After defining the prompt template, the code creates a JSON chat agent using the create JSON chat agent function from the Langchain library, passing the chat model tools and the defined prompt2 template. Finally, a tool executor instance is created, passing the available tools. The run agent function takes data as an argument and invokes the agent runnable with the given data. It returns a dictionary containing the agent outcome from the invocation. The execute tools function also takes data as an argument. It extracts the agent action and tool input from the agent outcome in the data. It then prompts the user with a confirmation message asking whether to continue with the specified tool and tool input. If the user responds with N, no, a value error is raised. If the user confirms or if the confirmation step is skipped, it invokes the tool executor created earlier with the agent action. The output of the tool execution is appended to the intermediate steps list in the data dictionary. The should continue function is defined to determine the next edge to follow in conditional branching. It takes data as an argument. If the agent outcome in the data is an instance of agent finish, the function returns the string end, indicating that the branching should end. Otherwise, if the agent outcome is not an instance of agent finish, the function returns the string continue, indicating that the branching should continue. Sets up a state graph workflow with two nodes, agent and action. Defines conditional branching based on the should continue function, compiles the graph into an executable application, provides an input dictionary with a query, invokes the application with the input, and prints the final output from the agent's outcome. Congratulations. That is all it takes to make a loop in action and react, prompting chatbot using LangGraph. The next steps depend on your imagination and creativity for better chatbot performance. Drop a comment to share what you are working on. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Stay tuned to this series because I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to come. In the next article, I can't wait to see what you will build based on what you have learned here. Thanks for watching and keep spreading your love. Cheers!